there folks welcome back to water child tarot and this is part two of my japanese tarot series um, and we're just talking about some decks that i picked up in japanese auction sites over the summer and the early fall it took me quite a number of weeks to scour the sites and be patient and um, look for good deals and one thing i didn't disclose in my last video um, but i wanted to share with you is how much money i paid um, so in total, I bought 16 decks. Not all of them were Japanese tarot. Some of them were just some oddball things that I saw on the market or had had my eye on anyway and happened to be for sale on these Japanese auction sites. Um, and in total, I paid just under $500 for 16 decks. So that works out to about $30 um, per item. And that includes all of the fees. So the, the internal shipping, uh, domestic shipping fee from the seller to the warehouse, it includes the buying service fees, it includes the credit card fees, it includes the repackaging fees, and the shipping to from Japan to the US to my house. Um, so I feel com comfortable with that. I think it's, you know, that's fine. Um, and I know that, uh, you know, the, the kind of spending and collecting and hoarding and um, kind of the prices of decks on, you know, different auction sites have been a hot topic lately. Um, so that's why I just kind of wanted to share um, and be transparent about what I had spent. Um, it's not a small amount of money, but it's certainly not a huge amount of money considering the number of decks that I was able to uh, purchase for that total. So um, anyway, moving on, uh, we're now into the 1980s. So my part one, if you didn't catch that, I'll put a link below. Uh, we talked about a few um, cornerstone decks from the 1970s. So we're moving on from the 70s to the 1980s. And the first deck we're going to look at is this one. It's known as the Mineo Maya. It was published in 1980. Um, it's known as the Maneo Maya Original Tarot or the Vintage Golden Tarot. And Maneo Maya is the name of the artist. Um, he was known for uh, his work on manga, a series called Pataliro, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, but that he was um, very popular in the late 70s and 80s and is still alive today. Um, this deck was published by Hakusen Sha of Tokyo. And interestingly, um, it, it has a tie-in with earlier tarot, so I'll get to that in just a second. But here's the packaging, um, on, and this was a, considered a special edition of this deck. So this is the outer box with this pink color and then all this gold on it. The booklet is black. Um, it kind of reminds me of the, the booklet for the renaissance style tarot cards that we saw in the last video um, and then the inner packaging uh, looks like this and when you open this up there's a wallet that goes here and then inside this wallet you have the cards which come in not one not two but three piles of cards so if you don't like split boxes um, that's something just to be aware of the backs look like that and these are small um, compared to sort of standard playing card or tarot card size. So there's your standard playing card size. And these are, yeah, quite a bit smaller. Um, I love the line work here. Mineo Maya is, you know, I'm not a super, super fan of any particular Japanese artist, but Mineo Maya definitely um, has gorgeous detail. I love the gold on here. And this is a playing card deck, so you'll see the associations. This is the King of Diamonds or the King of Pentacles. Um, and there's a walkthrough, a detailed walkthrough of this by Lisa MCW is her channel name. Um, I'm sorry, Lisa, you, ha you have an, a full name and uh, you say it so quickly, I can't always catch it. Um, but yeah, just really cool interpretations. Like here's our Knight of Cups or Jack of Hearts. Um, so this is a deck that I'm looking forward to working with, even though it's a collector's item. Uh, I actually want to read with this because I think it could give some really cool readings. Looks like that pile was turned the other way. So 
here's what's interesting to me um, about this deck, just as I'm showing you a few more cards. Um, so Adam McLean says on his website, um, which I'll link below, the Manea Maya Tarot was created by the artist of that name. It's a com the deck and the accompanying book were instigated by Midori Yamada, whose own book, published in 1961, was issued with the first printing of a tarot deck in Japan. Ding, ding, ding. So remember um, in the previous video, I was talking about the Kaishobu being the first deck printed in Japan, or the first one of Japanese origin, but apparently it could be this RWS um, reprint or knockoff or clone, whatever it is, um, that was published by Midori Yamada. I don't know. Um, if you know, let me know down below. Uh, but in the meantime, um, it's possible that the artist Maneo Maya, who drew these cards, was influenced by Midori Yamada to create a deck of his own. Well, hello from the future. Uh, this is Sarah interrupting my own video to tell you that I've just had an email exchange with Adam McLean, uh, the person I just quoted, as talking about this early tarot deck that supposedly uh, influenced Maneo Maya to create his own deck. And this is an image um, from a book that Adam McLean was able to send me. Now, I don't know anything about the book. Adam didn't include any publication information or title, um, but this is that supposed Rider Waite clone. And as you can see, it is basically an exact um, outline clone in pink of uh, Pamela Coleman Smith's original artwork. And again, I don't read Japanese, and this image quality is not good enough that I can auto-translate it, so I'm not sure what we're getting at the top of the page here, but I just wanted you to see this image and see that there is an early deck that is an RWS clone um, that may be the first deck printed in Japan for the Japanese tarot market. If anybody can confirm this or give more detail, please, again, leave a comment below. All right, back to the rest of the video. And even though these pip cards are pretty plain, they still have some embellishments. And um, I just, I love the gold. I really do. And I'm not usually like a blingy person, um, but I do like this. We have a dragon here with the tower. Um, so yeah, and it's, the line work is so beautiful. And I like the, the varied imagery and interpretations of these cards. They're so different from uh, a lot of the kind of standard uh, images that we get to see in Western tarot. So, the emperor with his peacock. So, yeah, here's a hierophant and we've got, you know, planets and things. So, just really cool. Anyway, I encourage you um, to go check out Lisa's walkthrough and I will put that in the notes below this video. All right, next up is a perennial favorite of the channel. This is the Angel Tarot, also published in 1980. Um, Stuart Kaplan was involved in some way in the publication of this deck. I'm not exactly sure how, um, but I do know that it was distributed in the U.S. by, the, by his company, U.S. Games. Um, and it was also distributed in Japan with a Japanese uh, booklet and um, accompanying Japanese text. So I have only ever purchased this off of Japanese auction sites because you can pick up copies there much more cheaply than you can on American or UK eBay. Um, but you can find this deck on eBay as well. Um, it's not as rare as some people might have you think. So, you know, hunt around and um, make sure you get a decent price. Um, something that's interesting that I recently discovered is that this deck in a 22 card format was also used for... Um, advertising. So here uh, is, a, is a version um, that was used as a promotional piece by Sony, Sony Music, um, and it says for special selected members of Sony card. And then it has that emblem 
which I assume was Sony's logo at some point, and then emblems also on the backs of these cards. So, but it is the same, the same deck. Here's the Fool from both of these. So you can see it's exactly the same card. The printing on this promotional version does look a little washed out when compared with the Angel Tarot. And our buddy Adam McLean once again um, also mentions um, that there's another version of 22 cards called Angel Marseille Tarot published by Sekai Bunkasha uh, with no date given. I'll link his entry for that one uh, as well off of his website, but I'm assuming it's some variation of a promotional deck. Um, this Two of Coins card um, does show Made in Japan here at the bottom, and then it says Manufactured by Angel Playing Cards. So that's why it's called the Angel Tarot. It's not really um, anything to do with angels. It is a hybrid playing card deck. Um, in a similar way to the Maneo Maya, in that case, with this with the uh, French playing card suits mixed in with the Marseille um, reminiscent uh, pip cards. So here we have spades and swords, but I just love all the different colors that you get um, in this deck that are different from your traditional, um, you know, primary color Marseille decks um, that to me are just very hard on the eyes. This is this is lovely and has um, different palettes and it has the Swiss influence here. So I'll link to my longer video on this and you can see a full walkthrough in comparison. But that's the Angel Tarot. All right, next we have, um, which is either a groundbreaking discovery or, or not, um, we have this deck. Um, this deck is known as either the Secret Tarot or the Tarot of Wicca. And what I, what got me interested in this was kind of a two-part um, discovery when I was looking at the images of this on a tarot auction site. So the first was that some of these characters here reminded me of characters that I had pulled to look for copies of this deck. Um, so one hot tip is if you're on the auction sites and you're trying to find certain decks, sometimes it's easier if you type in the Japanese characters for the name of the creator or the artist or the publisher than trying to search in English. So I had copied and pasted some of this kind of text into a file that I could just plop into the auction sites and use to generate searches, and this deck came up. Now, the, the text that I had put in was Alexandria Jupiter King, who's the creator of this deck. So that got me interested. Then when I clicked through on the auction, I saw the back of the box. Ba-bam! Look at that. U.S. Games. So what the hell is this? Um, I don't, I don't understand fully what's going on here, okay? Um, clearly U.S. Games is involved. Clearly Alexandria Jupiter King is involved. Did they know, did Kaplan and Alexandria Jupiter King know each other? Were they business partners? Did Kaplan help distribute Alexandria Jupiter King's tarots in Japan because he understood sales and distribution stuff? I don't know. Um, if you know, if you understand this link better than I do, please leave some comments because um, I would love to find out more. So. What I can tell you is this is called the Secret Tarot or the Tarot of Wicca. We'll see why in just a second. Uh, this is the box that it comes in. It's our classic two-part overpackaged nightmare with the outer box and then the booklet. And that's what the book looks like. And here's the back. And in Japan, we read this way. And this is clearly a US Games production because it's got all of their other decks um, in here. This is just advertisements for other kinds of decks that they make. So I know this is US Games. It says so on the tin. It says so in the book. But it's also got Alexandria Jupiter King's name on it. So what the heck is it? I don't know. Um, I do know that Alexandria King's name appears on a lot of decks in the similar fashion to Stuart Kaplan or someone like Rachel Pollock or Mary Kay Greer, um, this person wrote a lot of accompanying booklets. So maybe they were commissioned to write the booklet for this with U.S. Games. I don't know. Anyway, uh, 
Um, I do know that it is published in Japan. The artist is H. Kitagawa and Alexandria Mokusheo um, is credited as the designer or the person who conceptualized this deck. So Alexandria Mokusheo or AKA Alexandria Jupiter King. It comes in this wallet style folder. And this is a very, um, as the name implies, Tara Wicca, um, it's a very sort of pagan and also Kabbalistic uh, deck, which is not normally my thing, um, but some allowances had to be made here for this, this weird tie-in and, um, you know, the tarot history behind it. So there's a blank card, um, and right off the bat, Ace of Wands, here's the Tree of Life from the Kabbalah, so we know that this is a very Kabbalistic deck. Um, it is a pip deck, but it's a pip with scenes behind. So, um, and what's weird is that you don't get like three chalices. You get a scene with a chalice, and then it says three of chalices, and then it has a number in the corner. So it's bizarre. Um, the backs on this edition look like this. I've also seen this packaged in a gold box um, with a very different cover. I think I might have even seen it in a third different design. So it's pretty weird, um, or pretty unusual, I should say. Uh, here's the title card for it. So we can even see um, the credits, which is uh, unusual to have this all spelled out for us in English. And we can see they're Euro mostly European uh, looking characters. 70s mustache feel in there. Yeah, it's really weird. Um, so I'll be happy to do a complete walkthrough on this if you would like. But if, in the meantime, if you understand any of the, um, the kind of crossover, how this came to be, I would love to know more about the Tarot of Wicca, aka Secret Tarot, aka what the hell were Stuart Kaplan and Alexandria Jupiter King getting up to in the 1980s. Now, next up, we have something that was a bit more rare and hard to find. Uh, this is called the Taro Sensai Juyutsu, or 12 Constellations Divinatory Taro. This is published in 1988. Um, the artist is credited as Kaichi Kano, and it's published by Suchaya Books. Um, and the text is by Shirai Etwal and Etowaru. Um, it's an 80 card deck and it has two bonus cards. We'll get into that in just a second. Um, so Adam says uh, that this is an 80 card version of the Etoile and Kano's 22 card Juni Cezia Tarot or Cezia Tarot um, with the added minors coming from Rider Waite Smith. But the um, Tarot Encyclopedia says uh, that. Basically, the majors only came after, came two years later, the 1988 uh, and 1990. So, I don't know, this is a chicken and egg thing, I don't know who's right here and whether the full-size deck came first or whether the um, it started as a majors only and then got expanded. Uh, this is sort of like an old VHS cassette tape box. This cheesy plastic, and then the book just kind of sits on top. Um, the book is an interesting take on the cards because it doesn't have full color. It has them in three tones, black, white, and pink. So, which kind of makes a cool looking deck in and of itself. Um, it'd be interesting to scan these and actually blow them up and, and turn those into its own thing. Um, but the deck itself is in full color. Um, it is a Rider Waite style clone, but it's been completely reconfigured, redrawn by the artist. So it's not just a retracing of Pamela Coleman Smith's artwork. Um, it's actually a complete redrawing. 
These are the back of the cards. And these are not in order. Um, the only card in this deck that is not in great condition is this one, and it's the Three of Swords. I don't know if you can tell, but these are actually laminated. They have this plastic coating, and it's just that this lamination has peeled up a little bit. So I'm wondering if anyone has any suggestions for me. I would be tempted to run this through my laminating machine and seeing if I could like glue that back down with heat, but I'm also worried about damaging the card. Um, I first out found out about this deck through um, a seller on eBay who actually still has their copy up for sale. It's damaged and so I didn't want to buy that one. So I just decided to go ahead and add this to my look for list on the Japanese auction sites and I got lucky and found this one. It's in excellent condition. The cards are very shiny as you can see and they're quite thin. Um, they're mostly western faces but then you get like this hermit looks a little more Japanese to me. Um, but yeah, it's just, you know, it's clearly inspired by the Rider Waite Smith, but it is redrawn. I like the faces. I like the colors a great deal. This full card's really interesting. You've got um, a crescent moon, but in the sh moon shadow, you have a fetus with an umbilical cord. Um, and then you, there's a lot of butterflies and butterflies, um, in Japanese artwork that I've seen in tarot kind of mean the same thing as they do in Western tarot, which is about transformation and rebirth. Um, so I can do a full walkthrough of this one as well at some point. You know, it is very RWS-ish. Um, here you've got the moon and another face there. But it's pretty and I feel lucky to have a copy of this. Um, and I don't know a ton about it. So if you do, if you know more about this deck, that would be cool to know. Um, I mentioned two bonus cards, and this comes up in a couple of decks that I have, and it's Head of Dragon and Tail of Dragon. So um, these are interesting. They make the deck a, an 80 card deck rather than a 78. And as you can see, there's sort of positive connotations and imagery here and negative connotations and imagery here in the tail. So here you have a cherub and bright sunshine and the dragon looks like they're, you know, flying along or very enjoying their time. Whereas here you have the tail of the dragon just whipping around, lightning bolts, some kind of demon riding on the back of the dragon's tail, um, dark storm clouds, etc. So I like, I like these cards. I would probably, uh, if they came up in a reading, I'd probably use them as like yes and no or favorable and unfavorable kind of cards. Um, but it's just neat to see them here um, included. So that again is the 12 Constellations Tarot by Kaichi Kano. Now next up is a very similar deck. Um, and this is just known as the Uranai Tarot, which is like your future or your fortune uh, tarot. So this one, I don't know if it has a, a more detailed name than that. There's lots of decks that use that word Uranai, um, but this one's published in 1989. It's credited to Will and Shigeku Ozawa uh, are the artists and Ikeda Shoten is the publisher. Um, it's clearly an RWS knockoff, but I actually think it might be an art, an, a knockoff of a knockoff um, in that 12 Constellations Tarot that we just saw, or a knockoff of the JK Weight. And so I'm tempted to do like a triple side by side um, with this deck and some of those other ones, because I think the, the comparison will kind of reveal some secrets here. Um, you can always tell with like artist style and then publication date, you can kind of see who who was influenced by whom. Um, here's the back of the box. And this one's pretty readily available still. I've even seen it pop in the, pop up in US auctions. So I don't know if it's still in print. It was originally released, like I said, in 1989, but it's all over the Japanese sites if you wanna pick up a copy. Usually I don't pay. I've bought a couple copies of this to give away for friends and you know, 10 or $15 um, will get you there. I think this gets my award for most annoying box because 
it's not together. It's not all together. So you have these different pieces and it's hard to get the cards in here with no divider, nothing to hold them and then get this business all tucked back together. So I'm going to have to figure out how to, how to store this long term. Um, half of my deck had been looked through and half of it hadn't. So it still had the paper wrapper on half the cards. And then this is the booklet. So it's this pink kind of shiny shimmery color and you know it's your sort of standard tarot explanations spreads uh etc etc so again if you know anything else about these decks publication information etc i'm assuming that is our artist and uh yeah let me know if you can glean anything else let's look at the cards real quick so here's one thing that makes me think that this person uh, saw the JK weight and was like, oh yeah, let, let me do my own version. Because the JK weight has two um, sort of guide uh, guide cards like this with sort of keywords or um, information on them. Here are the backs. It's a very subtle kind of a squiggle design here. And then the other thing is just the, that some of the cards look, you know, very similar um, to the JK Weight. They all have uh, these kind of goofy faces. Bright colors. Yeah, I don't know if I would be able to read with this deck. It's got very severe, weird faces. Um, and some of the artwork looks unfinished, like why didn't they color in the background uh, here? Or on the Emperor, why not make his his surroundings have any color in them? And then the miners here are all uh, black, white, and shades of gray. So again, very RWS clone. But I think some of these features and some of the features in the, in the scenery in the back really remind me more of the JK Wade than they do of the RWS itself. So I would, um, I'm probably going to do a side-by-side -side comparison. So that is the Tarot Urenai, or the Your Future Tarot, again credited to Will and Shigeyuki, Shigeyuki Ozawa, um, and published by Akeda Shoten. And that brings us to our, um, the end of our 1980s series. And so I'm going to leave you here with these, and then uh, we will pick up with 1990s decks in part three of this Japanese tarot series. I hope you've been enjoying this. If you have, please uh, like, comment, subscribe, hit bells, smash buttons, and do all those things. Um, it just helps other people find the channel that are also interested in these topics. And, um, you know, again, I'd love to hear from you if you're interested in any of these decks, if you want me to do walkthroughs of any of them, um, or if you're just interested in, you know, learning more about them, if you've done your own research and can share that, any of those things uh, will be very helpful. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.